Since rugby players who were here at considerable financial cost. Where did all their money go? Million but they once turned up at a training session to find they had no had balls to train with. Two million. There must be a way to make this entertaining. There must be a way. Squat, scorn, scorn. So what? When I'm with some bowling bug beef. This video would have been a lot more fun a few years ago. Back in 2011, an astonishing Samoa team were absolutely smashing their way across the world, changing definitions throughout the rugby dictionary. The entries for brutal, physical, tenacious, ferocious now read C. Samoa. Doing a Tuolangi was a phrase long before Manu rolled into a white shirt. Fotuali came to mean best scrum half in the world, and every player dreaded their debut being defined as a Samoa were a heavyweight team constantly punching above their weight. And then something happened. Samoa were the penultimate qualifier for 2019, a single braid away from missing out on the tournament altogether, and have not looked the same team at all in the seven years since beating a Grand Slam champion Welsh team. So what? Uh, when I'm uh, with Samoan rugby. And what should we expect from them at this year's World Cup? Rugby was first introduced to Western Samoa, as it was then, by the Maoris brothers, who were not actually brothers, but French people. A group of missionaries, they decided that creating the Samoan rugby team hadn't incited enough sport-based violence, so they went on after that to found Celtic FC in a Glasgow previously solely ruled by Rangers. In the meantime, however, back in Samoa, the game really took off. And then Western Samoa played the first match in 1924. They left the morning more was against Fiji. Whole lot of squeezy. They played at seven in the morning. What a funny sitch. Even funnier was the tree in the middle of the pitch. Qualified for the World Cup for the first time in 91. What a lot of fun. They beat Wales and Argentina. But Scotland in the quarters, they couldn't overthrow us. A Welsh fan said, just imagine if we were playing the whole of Samoa. In 1999 World Cup, Wales did play the whole of Samoa and they lost again. Between 2011 and 2012, they beat the Aussies and the Welsh in Scotland. Nearly got the lot. But they narrowly missed out on beating the spring box. 2011 almost got to heaven. But after knocking on those pearly gates, Samoa were sent tumbling back down the metaphorical divine staircase at a proper bigger they are, harder they etc. rate. They clung on to enough of their old punching above their weight powers to beat Italy in 2014, but by World Cup year 2015, they were in free fall. One good game against Scotland salvaged some pride, but they barely put up a fight against Japan, and even their win over the USA was rather unconvincing and unremarkable. Samoan teams throughout time have been famous for their do-or-die attitude, willing to lay down lives for their country, although more often than not they try to make sure those are the lives of the opposition, not their own. And it was clear that something during that tournament was very wrong with Samoa behind the scenes, because this Samoan team did not appear to have the same level of motivation as normal. And it turns out, yes, a lot was going on behind the scenes. The issues date way back, but our first record of them is from during the 2011 tournament. Immediately afterwards, Samoa's captain and the all-time greatest leader of any Never Pacific know. nation war dance, and don't at me, Mohan Shalga made some comments about how the Samoan Rugby Union's officials had acted. He singled out Samoan Rugby CEO, Sua Peter Schuster, who treated the World Cup like a holiday bringing friends and board members to the hotel to constantly drink and team manager Tuala Vaea who would disappear for three days at a time and go out drinking almost every day of the World Cup almost every 
every day of the World Cup. The high ups were living it up whilst from a Samoa log that Leo said the members of the Samoa team live below the poverty line. Rugby commitments preventing them from holding stable jobs in unstable times. The SIU chairman is also the prime minister. It's a little bit sinister. And he says that any players kicking up a fuss are acting like spoiled children. Sounds like there's only one spoiled child here. This interview with Schrauger was published just over a month after the 2011 Rugby World Cup final. And despite being their captain and still their best hooker for another couple of years afterwards, the powers that be made sure that Schrauger never played for Samoa again. So with so much what you could you could probably term as corruption going on behind the scenes. Ultimately, it was kind of unsurprising when In November 17, Simone Rugby Union declared itself bankrupt. Oh, they felt so blue. One month later, World Rugby showed up and said, Hey, this just is not true. Around 43% of Samoa's estimated 11 million annual budget comes from World Rugby. And they just given Samoa 1.5 million just a month before bankruptcy. The SIU also receive a huge amount of money from a Chinese construction firm. Nobody knows why. World Rugby and Samoa had agreed terms for Samoa's high performance initiatives. The SIU did not implement them and use the money given elsewhere. Nobody knows why. Nobody knows why. This is made even worse by the fact that Simone Rugby Union also appealed to and took donations from common, hard-working people whose money also disappeared, never seen by the team, as Schwolger outlines here. Do you know how much money the people of Samoa donated? My understanding was... I think they're trying to raise more than, they were asking for six, six million tala. And what well, I believe is more than that. And some of these, these people are, are kids, they got nothing. And some of the families, they're probably the money they save for the whole week to buy bread for their kids, for their school. And they donated it just to see our people and our heroes to represent our country. And how much of that money did you see? Nothing at all. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. So where did the money go? That's the question. And it was a question they've been asked repeatedly. Twice in 2014, the IRB called Samoa to a meeting to discuss funding issues, like why a Chinese construction form was giving them loads of money, or where the money donated them by the community was going. And both times, Samoa's representatives missed it because they got their dates mixed up. The deeper you dig, the worse things get. I haven't even touched on the situation that saw the sixth best man for the job. The sixth best man for the job appointed as Samoa's coach before being fired three times, allowing current coach Steve Jackson to take over a year to the day from the start of this year's World Cup. Things do, however, look slightly better under Jackson. In this year's Pacific Nations Cup, Samoa lent back on what they do best, working hard and hitting harder. But he's been given a very difficult job in a very short period of time to do it. Whereas Fiji's John McKee, or Japan's Jamie Joseph, could just use the PNC to fine-tune their teams and Gary Gold in the USA use it to build depth and test some things. Jackson is building a team from scratch months before the World Cup. It's a task somehow even bigger than any of their forwards. And yet I wouldn't entirely rule out Samoa really coming back strong in this year's World Cup. They're something of an unknown quantity, and I'd be surprised considering the strength in their pool, but I wouldn't rule it out. Sticking on to the man that held their golden generation down is strong motivation, and despite what five seasons at the Blues might suggest, Jackson knows top flight rugby well. And they have some very good players. 
Unfortunately, the utterly magical, utterly magical. Tim Nanai Williams hasn't recovered from injury in time to make the squad, which is a real shame because he's really good. But Cardiff Blue centre Ray Lilo is what you might term a handful. Jack Lamb in the back row is extremely hardworking and very dynamic, and locks like a captain man. Chris Vui is pretty exceptional. When asked if he could pick any one non-English player from the Premiership to play for England, Eddie Jones chose Vui, calling him world class, and I think Bristol fans will know exactly why he said that. And for those of you who aren't Bristol fans, it's because he's really bloody good. I'd also keep an eye out, however, for new number eight, Aframosa, who made his debut in July and carries so hard. If he ran straight at the scoreboard, the individual letters in his country's name would shit themselves and rearrange to spell Amosa's name in an effort to appease him. Because it's been a while since we last saw the rugby dictionary getting scared into changing its own definitions. There's a lot going on with Samoa behind the scenes, but I think I speak for all rugby fans when I say... World Rugby is better for having a strong Samoa side. And whilst I have no insider information, I do really hope that things are starting to move back in the right direction. Because despite everything that Welsh fans so wisely quipped back in 1991, I really hope this September, October, we get to see what the whole of Samoa can do. Thank you very much for watching that. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you mostly to Tom Rosenthal, who wrote all the songs, did all the music, did all the singing -ing -ing -ing, because I have the musical talent of a guitar, uh, which might sound impressive, but then you remember that guitars are inanimate objects and can't play themselves. Um, so thank you to Tom for being a incredibly talented. So please do go, do go and check out his other stuff because he's genuinely really, really good. Um, and B for being such a good sport that at no point when I said something ridiculous like, oh, why don't, why don't you just do a song about the bankruptcy of the Samoan rugby team? Did he ever go, no, that's ridiculous. I, I've got better things to do, like selling out shows in Sweden. Uh, no, he just, he, he did it and he was wonderful and really lovely. So thank you very much, Tom. Um, and thank you for watching. You may have noticed that was number 19 in an ongoing series on every team in the Rugby World Cup. Uh, those of you who know the Rugby World Cup will know A, it starts very soon, and B, there are only 20 teams in it, which means only one more to go, which will be on Japan. Now, speaking of Japan, some of you, the most observant percentile, might have noticed this big grid bastard in front of me. This is a suitcase. It's because in a mass, I don't have my watch on, but a matter of hours time, I will be taking the suitcase and heading to London, where I'll get on a flight to Poland. And then from Poland, that's my connecting flight, I'm heading to, to Japan for the World Cup. Uh, so the next time you see me, I'll be in Japan with this boy, which I've named Toby, so that um, a big, big Toby's going to the World Cup. Um, and in the meantime, though, if you do want something to do to fill these last two weeks, why not download the Find a Player app? It's a great way to connect with people who like the channel or like rugby or just, you know, fancy a kickabout, fancy playing squash nearby. Um, you can do that. You can head to the Find a Player app on Android and on the Apple and download it. And then in the meantime, I'll see you when I'll be in Japan. You might be in Japan. You probably, you most likely won't be just, just on law of averages um, speaking. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Thank you again, Tom Rosenthal. I'll see you in Japan.